Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to talk about Dune Part 2. Um, so this is a Denis Villeneuve film that's a sequel to his Part 1, obviously, from, I think it was 2021. So it's been a couple of years. Um, I, I, I was blown away. <clears throat> I really, really was. This film is visually stunning it's probably one of the best films i've seen from a cinematography point of view every single part of this was just beautiful <clears throat> it really was and there are there are just so many aspects of it where you could just take a snapshot and and have that as as a, as a canvas it's it's absolutely incredible it really really is um the story is fantastic uh obviously from the Frank Herbert, oh, I'm so bad with names, from the Frank Herbert books originally. I'm going to be honest, I haven't read the books and I've only read like half or so of, of part one so far. Um, but I'm I'm reading, I'm going to be reading these as the third one comes out. I'm probably going to be up to date and I'd have read that within a week of that. It, I am just, I'm in awe of this story. It seems so incredibly epic and just it's just such a grand scale it's it's like intergalactic politics it and it's just so well written and the acting is superb in this film but i will say the standout is javier bardem he he just hits a home run with this one i, I cannot remember the guy's name but he's the leader of the fremen uh, he was briefly in the first one. He probably had about 10 minutes of screen time, if that. And this, I I, I think oh, he's probably, other than Paul, he's probably the one that's on, on the screen the most. And he he just draws everyone in. He really does. It's it, it's incredible to see this dynamic within, within the Fremen where you've got the believers and then the non-believers that Paul is the Messiah. And how he interacts with both Paul, Paul's mother and and everyone else. It, it, it's just it's just a joy to see. It really is. And I I honestly I cannot wait to see this film again. I really can't. I am I would be very surprised if it didn't get any kind of Oscar nominations. I, I believe it should, without a doubt, get Oscar nominations. And like I said, although I haven't read the books, I believe June part two um, does cover the end of book one. So we do still have book two and book three left. <clears throat> but June one and two is is book one. And like I said, it's just, it's, it's absolutely stunning. It really is. There are so many moments in it where you just, I, I still can't believe. Like normally when you're watching a film, um, and they were either in different worlds or they're in different countries or anything like that. You, you can normally tell, I can kind of, you can kind of see where it's shot. Like, ah, oh, I can see maybe where that's shot or where that's shot. Um, <clears throat> so I, 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 just off to my, I think, was it Game of Thrones was shot in Croatia for some of the, the sort of like, the that's weirder scenes. There's the stuff that was filmed in Scotland, in Ireland. And you, you can usually tell those kinds of things. Um, I'm going to be honest with with the desert was it the desert of Arrakis. I, I have absolutely no idea. It is so vast. It's so massive that I, I honestly have no idea where they went to film these. There are obviously deserts within the world that they they could have filmed, but I, I can't I can't imagine them being a particularly hospitable place, and. To, to carry out such an incredible venture as, as a film with, with this kind of scope is, is just mind boggling to me. It really is. So I do think uh, the cinematographers, uh, without a doubt, are probably the, the best of the best and that they should be awarded as such because this film is, is just a joy to see and to see it in IMAX as well. It, it is nothing short of a masterpiece. <clears throat> it really isn't. Um, I will say the one drawback I did have of it 
was that I did feel a little bit confused at times. <coughs> um, without giving too much away, there's a there's a point within the story where the Fremen do pass a judgment on Paul to say whether he is or isn't the Messiah. And part of his trials is that he needs to wander off into the desert on his own, um, go round a certain point and come back. And and Javier Bardem's character does talk to him and just say, look, don't don't listen to the spirits of the desert because they will they'll they'll draw you away and they'll essentially make you lost within that vast desert. And there's a, there's a there's a couple of scenes there, and then it just kind of jumps to him being back at camp, and I was a little bit thrown by that because I wasn't too sure if this was a, a a flashback or a flash forward, and and what was going on because I really thought that if he was going to take on this kind of this, this trial, then they would have welcomed him back. Um, on his return and go, yes, you completed this aspect of it or we're going to do something else next. But there wasn't any kind of transition like that. So for me, him wandering off within the desert, and then I think, oh, I can't remember Zendaya's character's name, Ch Chani, um, <clears throat> she joins him. And I, I don't, I don't, th again, it's, it was, it was a bit confusing whether she'd actually join him or if she was like a mirage of someone that he's, he's hallucinating because of all of the, 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 dust you know the uh the spice <clears throat> um so that there are aspects to it where i think was was a little bit confusing um who knows Villeneuve might end up putting out a director's cut that, that could smooth things over but for anyone that hasn't gone to see this film first of all you should see this film but for anyone who hasn't yet i would suggest re-watching part one because this film does take place straight after part one does. And if you can't fully remember what happened in part one, you should rewatch it because it, it doesn't, it, it's not forgiving, really. That There's a couple of little mentions as to what happened in, in the previous film, but it's nothing, it's nothing too obvious. So it, it's like a blink and you miss it kind of thing. So if, if you're unsure about whether you would remember what happened in part one or not, rewatch it because I really do think you'll get more out of part two if you have. Um, but yeah, guys, if you have already seen Dune part two, please let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe because that really does help me out. And I'll see you all in the next video.